have service this evening at 6 o'clock as usual. I have never missed it. So, not only. Amen. We will have service this evening at 6 o'clock. I have never, as long as I've been pastoring, I've never missed a service for super anything because I serve a super Christ Jesus. Amen. For those who want to come, we will be open as usual for business at 6 o'clock and our business is worshiping the Lord. Happy birthday, Hunter. 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 Happy birthday. Let's give him a I was at his age at one time, but I believe that was before Noah's Ark. <laughs> we have a lot to be thankful for. We have so much to be thankful for. The Lord has been speaking to me on some matters. If y'all been coming regularly, I've got a sort of a theme. But I don't want my thoughts to get in the way of God's thoughts. I need to hear from God. The main thing is to hear from God. I heard so many people say, well, that's the doggone good. Some of them, a lot of them would say, doggone, I'm from South East, now that's the way we talk. You know, that's the way it is. And, uh, well, what, what was it? I don't know, but it was good. Well, therefore, you haven't applied it to your life, have you? Well, we need to apply God's Word to our life. We all need God's Word. I need to hear from God. <coughs> So my message this morning, understand, I need some, somebody get some water for you, that one's almost out. Uh, uh, that one's almost out. But, uh, but anyway, when I worship and praise, I give in it. Amen, I'm going to worship and praise. But understand what we believe, understand what you believe. And this is what the Lord has been laid on my heart. We need to get back to what we believe and to understand what we believe. It's important. It's important to know what we believe, but don't you think it thank you, my brother. Don't you think it is just as important to understand what we say we believe? And I pray you're going to follow me this morning. We need to get back to what we believe and to understand what we believe. God told me to go back to whence I came. And I believe that God wants each one of us here to do the same. To go back to our basic salvation experience. What do we believe about the virgin birth? What do we believe about the crucifixion? What do we believe about the resurrection? What do we believe about the second returning of Christ? What do we believe about the promises of God? What do we believe? Now, do we understand what we believe? And now, are we going to apply what we believe to what we just said? And I think it's a very important time, especially, this to me is one of the greatest times to be alive as a Christian. But it's also one, it's going to be one of the hardest times right now to be a Christian as well. But we're going to see the glory of God shine, and I want to see the glory of God more than anything else. Can I have an amen? Amen. But being a Christian doesn't mean everything I wrote is going to be perfectly smooth. Amen. Being a Christian means that we're going to have some potholes. Down south, in New Orleans area, a pothole, you can almost put your whole car in it. They were pretty bad. I done tore up some front ends with those potholes. But anyway, that's the way it goes. But anyway, we need to get back to the simplicity of the Word of God. In plain English, we need to let God be God. We need to get out the way and let God be God and let God have His way. And I believe that. To be able to walk with God, first we have to believe in God. Amos chapter 3 verse 3 says, How can two walk together unless they agree? How can we walk with God unless we agree with God? Second, we have to accept God for who He is. No more, no less. For God will do far greater things in our lives if we don't be there. Quit trying to make things happen. And start praying and believing. That's why I believe it's so important for, for us to pray and for people to hear our prayers. Because when God starts answering the prayers that we have just prayed, it's going to give encouragement to others. And that's what I believe. I like to hear what people are praying for because then I want to see what God is doing. 
And I start praising God for it. I know what God has done in my life. But I don't know what God has done in your life. But if I share what God has done in my life and you share what God has done in your life, who's going to be edified? It's not me and it's not you. It's going to be the glory of God. And that's what it's all about. It's the glory of God. Edif edif edification. Edifying Jesus. Well, let's get back. Let's go to John chapter 1, verses 12 through 18. And I love the book of John. John gets right to the point. John don't beat around the bush. He tells you exactly like it is. And that's what we need. Y'all ready? John chapter 1 starting in verse 12. Y'all ready? Amen. Diane, you did a good job. Neil, everybody did a great job. Can we just say everybody did a good job? Amen. Praise Amen. God. Amen. Verse 12 says, But as many as received Him, to them, he, to them gave He power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on His name which were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the Word was made flesh and dwelt among us. And we beheld His glory, the glory as of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. John bare witness of Him and cried, saying, This was He of whom I spake. He that cometh after me is preferred before me, for He was before me. And of its fullness have we all, all we received in grace for grace. For the law was given by Moses, but grace and truth came by Jesus Christ. No man had seen God at any time, the only begotten Son, which is in the bosom of the Father, he hath declared him. And I tell you what, that, that, that just touches my heart. And the Word became flesh and dwelt among us. To me, that, that, that's one of the most powerful statements that can be said. That the God who created everything out of nothing wanted to come and walk with us. And not only did He want to, He did. And not only did He do it, but He also gave Himself up as a sacrifice for our sins. And I say that's a big amen. amen. That's what I said when God showed me that vision. Do this. Do this. And just look in the pit. And who's in the pit? The devil and the demons. They're not, they're not there yet. Come on now. we got to know what the Bible says. Nobody can cast a demon or the devil into the pit. But you can cast them into the dry places according to the Word of God. Jesus is the one that's going to do it. Amen? Amen. Jesus is the one that's going to do it. But Jesus gave that, Jesus gave that revelation, gave, Jesus gave that, that we don't have to be afraid of. When the devil starts getting at you, you know what you do? This is what I do. I don't know whether y'all are saying or not, but I'll say this. I'll say, Booga, and to the dry places, you have to go through the blood of Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Praise God. I'm not afraid to fight the devil. I'm not afraid to fight the demon. Why? Because greater is he where? Greater is he is in here than he is of the world. So if greater is he is in here, what do I have to be afraid of? What do I have to fear? Devil, I'm telling you now, you've got to get out of here. Amen. Because Jesus, when Jesus said it was finished, it was finished. But don't you believe we need to understand what we believe? Somebody says, well, what? I, I had a call. The lady didn't make it. But she called me. I believe it was Wednesday or something. I don't know what kind of church we are. Well, first of all, we believe in Jesus Christ. We edify Him. He's number one. Everything is about Jesus Christ. But if you want to know a little bit, I'll share with you. I'm from the Southern Baptist background, being baptized in the Holy Ghost, operating on a spiritual gifts. It, doesn't that simplify it quite a bit? I believe in the spiritual gifts, and I exercise the spiritual gifts. I believe in the gift of discernment. I believe in the gift of speaking in tongues. I believe in the gift of healing. I believe, I, and come on now, I believe what the Word says, I believe it. But first, I've got to know what it says, then I've got to understand what it says, then what do I have to do? Apply it. In other words, don't use it. But understand what we believe. Knowing, believing, and accepting are all different words with different meanings. Let's talk about knowing for a second. Many people know a lot of things, and that just about sums it up. Knowledge without applications means that you have knowledge, and it doesn't affect or help you one bit. You can go to school and get your degree, but if you don't start applying that degree, all you have is a degree, which you can say it like it is, you just got a diploma 
a certificate on the wall. Not doing you a bit of good. But what I know about the Word of God, I want to apply it. And we're going to get into know about the Word of God. We're going to get into that just a little bit. But believing. Many people believe a lot of things. <coughs> believing and applying have two different meanings again. One of these many meanings has an effect on your life, and the other doesn't. How many times have you heard someone say, Oh, I know that I should do that, but I just don't know. Well, I believe this. If you're in the Word of God and you're on your face, you know what to do. Get up and do it. Amen. Doesn't that make sense? <clears throat> if God speaks to me, look, look uh, I'll share this. Yeah, most of y'all know this. It took me a long time to know when God speaks to me. I'm just telling you like it is. This was not an overnight experience. I just didn't get saved and get baptized in the Holy Ghost and start boom. It took time because tradition held me back. My denomination held me back. Certain things held me back. Back in August of 93, I fell about 13 to 16 foot and hit the slab, the concrete slab. We was building a new church down south and all that stuff broke off of me. Hallelujah. Amen. I tell you what, I fell and I hit the slab. Praise God, we didn't break the slab and the slab didn't break me, but all that belief was broken off of me and I started saying, God, you're the only one that could have caught me. God, you are the only one. Now, God, what do you want me to do? Hallelujah. Praise God. I believe in spiritual gifts. We exercise them. We have God. We have, ooh, Lord, have mercy. Lord, I remember a deacon got mad at me one Sunday. Lord, he got mad. He was mad too. This book was bad. He said, what are you doing laying on the hands? I said, did he get healed? He said, yeah, well, would you rather put him in the cemetery or put him on the road? People were healed. Not because of us, but because of our faith in the one who does it. God's healing right now. How many here can feel it? I'm sharing this with you. I think this is testimony. Okay, boy. Me and Mickey, I think we need to share. Some of y'all are going, they got several of y'all going through some things right now. But if me and Mickey go to prison, we minister to about 200 men a week. Amen. If you buy one of those books, the prophets go to buy more Bibles to put in the prison. But that just that means so I don't get a penny from it, and the church stuff it goes straight into the mission ministry. I wasn't feeling good, and uh, I already made some promises from the week before. I wasn't feeling. I was going to stay home. I said no, no, I better go. I wasn't. I was having fever. I was just going to feel good. And we got in prison about six thirty. We was in the pond, maybe twenty minutes to seven. At 7 o'clock, as I was speaking, I felt the Holy Spirit. I felt the warmth of the Holy Spirit start at the top of my head and just go all the way down to the bottom of my feet. I felt great. The healing hand of God was on me because I was obedient to God. We need to be obedient to God. Amen. Accepting means that you know that you believe that you are now applying it to your daily life. How is God speaking to you right now? This is individuals now. How is God speaking to you right now? Apply it to your life. Lay everything aside. You know what God told me last night? About one o'clock. He was sharing something with me. And it was vivid, just as plain as I'm seeing y'all now. And I'm not going to get into the details because it's none of your business. It's between God and me. But He showed me something. And this is what He showed me. And He wants me to share it with y'all. The past is the past. Leave it alone. Bury it. Today is the day that God is with you. And He's walking with you right now into tomorrow. Yes. It's time to go lay aside all that stuff. It's time to get up. Let's start praising God with the time that we have left. God, if I don't have the 24 hours left, I want to praise you 24 hours. If you won't let me live another two years, God, I want to praise you another two years. I want to get off of it. I want to start praising the God of glory because God is saying, 
I accept the word. Y'all get a little excited? Man, when you're in the presence of the Holy Ghost, amen. 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 <laughs> it don't hurt to laugh a little bit. Too. Amen. I like to laugh. Well, anyway, accepting. Accept what God's word says for your life. Accept what God wants for your life. God did not create you to be depressed. God did not create you to be in a rut. God didn't create you to say, oh, why, God, why can't this happen to me? God didn't create you to do that or say that. God created you to walk in His presence, to walk in His power, to walk in His blessings according to His will and your word. Amen. 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 Praise God. God gives the right to become children. Understand what we believe. Now, God gives the right to become children. Let's go to verse 12. But as many as received Him. How many here received Christ? <laughs> to them He gave power to become what? Sons of God. And if you're, if you're a lady, you're a daughter of God. Even to them that believe on His name. God gives the right to become His children. In order, excuse, in order to become a child of God, you have to be reborn. What does verse 13 say? Which were born not of blood, nor the will of the flesh, nor the will of man, but of God. That's why the virgin birth is so important. That's why verse 14, verse 1, verse 14 of John is so important. That, that, that God provided a way for us to be reborn, not the will of the flesh, in other words, not, not the will of man, but rather the will of God. That's why He became flesh. That's why he went to the cross. That's why Jesus said in the hour, he said, Father, not my will but mine be done. <coughs> because through this, we are born again. We are reborn. Think about it like this. To be alive physically, what you have to be? You got to be born. You got to be breathed. You can't breathe unless you're born. And I wish these abortion people would start to understand that, 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 that a fetus is, is life. It's not a fetus. It's a baby. Wow. It's a baby. We need to change all that. No more fetuses. No, don't say fetuses. Don't say that. I don't like that. Say baby, baby, baby. It's a baby. Amen. Amen. <coughs> all right. I believe that. <coughs> But think about it. To be alive physically, you have to be born. To be alive spiritually, what do you have to do? <laughs> you got to be reborn. Amen. I'm reborn. Hallelujah. Praise God. This rebirth gives meaning to life, which in turn produces hope. Where there is hope, there is purpose. Purpose produces joy. Joy produces laughter, which in turn produces health. How many here hasn't felt like laughing lately? Now I'm not saying you're not saved. You're saved. You believe in Jesus, you're saved. You accept Jesus, you're saved. Amen. But how many here really, really, really feel like laughing a lot? You know? Sometimes I think your life just becomes overwhelming. It's almost like it's just overwhelming. You got so many things going on at one time. You got so many situations, conditions, and circumstances that's pulling you apart. You know, to me, to me, Sunday morning worship is one of the most important times because I worship Christ. But, but being a pastor, you've got to have everything running smoothly. It, up to a point. We give the Holy Ghost the freedom to work. But I can't say we're going to have church at 9, 4, 10, 45 and show up at 12 o'clock. Amen? That, 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 that's just not the way God works. But you've got a lot of things pulling at you. But, but you know what? Jesus says, come to me and I'll take care of it for you. Jesus is going to take care of it. But I like this. The rebirth gives meaning to life. And, where, and, and meaning to life produces a reason for life. The reason for life is not to accomplish a great mighty things. If God is calling you to do that, say amen. 
But it doesn't mean that you have to have 14 cars in the driveway. Because if I wanted to move the first car, <clears throat> I'd have to move all the 13, right? So God has blessed me. I just got one. And I know have got one which you don't use. So all I have to do is back it up. I don't have to call Mickey and Mike to come move all the cars so I can get the car. Y'all, I'm, I'm joking, but y'all hope you understand what I mean. God didn't call me to pastor a 4,000 member church. He pastored me to pastor a church such as this. And you know what? I'm having a good time. And the devil don't like it because I got time to cast that book out. I got time to sit in front of somebody and drink coffee. And in fact, if you sit in front of me and we drink coffee, it's going to take a half a pot. I'll just be honest with you. I've had my pot this morning. You just saw me drink some more seed. You're addicted to it? No, I just like it. Can you quit? I don't want to. <laughs> Amen? That settles that. Praise God. Come on, but what I'm sharing is this. God created you, and God breathed life into you. And then God says, look, you're my child. Do you know what you believe? Now, are you applying to your life what you believe? If the answer is yes, start telling that depression to get on out of here, baby. You know you can do this to yourself? Do y'all know that? I know. How many of you know that? But it's something about where two or more agree. Amen? So praise God. How many of you know Y'all know I had a heart attack, don't you? How many of you know I had a heart attack all this the past year? Amen? I feel better now than I did then. I was getting out of breath then. And you know, God was preparing me to walk with Mickey. He comes here every day outside of Sunday, and we walk up a half a mile. Praise the Lord. Amen. I couldn't have did that before. Almost, I can do that now. You know, the devil ain't getting beat out, baby. Oh, oh, God is in control. God is the one in control of my life. And when it's time to go, God is going to bring me home. Amen. We're going to start praising God. Mike, I don't mind. I don't mean to get, get in the way. He, he does a pretty good job. <laughs> but that's what I'm saying. God gives you and I the right to become children. And you know, you live your life one step at a time. One step at a time. We live one step at a time. One step at a time. All right, now I'm going to share it. Oh, i got to share this real quick. Okay. Okay, Luke 24, 45. Let's go there real quick. Just, just turn it over. Look at just, just a couple pages. Mine, just a couple pages. Because this is what I want to share. <clears throat> you have to be reborn in order to understand the Scriptures. Yeah. All right, verse 45 of Luke 24. Now these two men were walking with Jesus. Now Jesus had his glorified body. Okay, we talked about after the resurrection. Remember these two men were walking the road of the Mayus, if I'm not mistaken? And they was walking with Jesus, and Jesus was talking to them. They didn't know who he was. They said, you, you haven't heard about what happened. Well, it just happened to the guy they were talking to, our Savior. And verse 45 says, Then open he their understanding that they might understand the Scriptures. It's the Holy Spirit that revealed the revelation of God's Word to us. Somebody might say, well, how can two people read the same thing again? Well, it's not going to be that much off, but I want you to understand that. But this is what I want you to understand too. And I'm not playing with words. Whatever you're needing in your life at that present time, when you're reading the Word of God, the Holy Spirit is going to reveal to you what you need. I had one lady tell me down south, uh, 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 she told me, she said, man, you, she said, Brother Blakely, you, you really cleaned my toenails this morning. I said, Sister, I really didn't mean on cleaning your toenails. She said, but whatever. In other words, what she was saying, that what God was saying was touching her heart. Now, I, back then, we were we, running, well, I'll never get to that. But I couldn't tell you what on each one of y'all's heart right now. Because I don't know. But don't you think God does? And God is going to reveal to me and to you what each one of us needs to get through another day. But what I see, and I'm going to close with this. God has so much in store for His children. But let's get to the place in our walk with Him that will allow God to pour out His blessings upon us and our families. 
God has got so much, and I believe this is for y'all right now, for each one of y'all right now. God has got so much for you. Don't look at where you're at. Don't look at what situation you might find yourself in. And don't pay no mind to the circumstances. But rather pay a mind to what God's Word says for your life. Because right now, right now, this will be a word prophetly, I pray, Lord, in the name of Jesus, that each one of y'all have got special blessings coming today. And have a day. Heavenly Father, we praise you and we thank you for the day. We thank you for this wonderful time together. In Jesus' name, amen.